Hello everyone, it's October 30th, 2012. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! Sorry, it's been such a long time. Uh, a combination of me being quite busy and preparing for a concert that I'm quite excited about and just been busy and also kind of stumped for topics. Uh, I tried recording a couple of things and just wasn't quite happy with them and there's some there's some in-depth looks that I want to do but some of the pieces aren't quite ready and so anyway somehow it's been I don't know I'm quite a number of weeks here and I'm just which is which is not what I want but I'm um, recording something today and excited about this what I'm going to do today is start I think I'm going to try to do this in a two-part look at uh, Ankh van Kampen's variations on a Welsh carol and Ankh van Kampen was a Dutch harpist she's dead now but her son has a has a wonderful site um, about her life and her works, some of her, you know, her writing and stuff like that. So you should be seeing a link to that up on the YouTube video right now. So check that out. And her Variations on a Welsh Carol was one of my favorites when I was learning the harp. And it's, of course, can be played on the Celtic harp, but I'm going to play it today on the Pet harp. And it's, it's again, it's funny looking at it now, it's, um, Reminds me a little bit just some of the format of, of some of the stuff that I did with the Greensleeve variations. And again, it's a theme and variations. And that's kind of a nice thing to learn sometimes because, you know, you, you once you learn the theme, you're kind of just repeating things in it. But it's a longer piece, so, you know, you kind of get the benefit of, of not having to overload yourself with too much stuff to learn. So I'm going to look at the first three, you know, the theme and the first three variations. And what I'm going to try to focus on is maybe a little less on how to play it technically. You know, we're talking about stuff like, you know, closing the hand and all those good things. Oh, wrist movement. But looking at it from a musical perspective on some of the things that uh, one might think about. So let me, let me play this. Here's this opening. And, you know, when you're first learning this, you, you find here's the statement of the theme, this Welsh carol. somewhat it's elegant certainly very melancholy and uh, I think yeah plaintive is a, is a good a good word and so when you're first looking at that one of the things of course one of the very first things to think about is the left hand Oops, let me move this along a little bit the left hand and what you're gonna do with the left hand so left hand just has these these chords on the harp, sometimes there can be a tendency to, once you learn how to do rolled chords, which of course are wonderful, they, and that great harp sound, you want to do them all the time. So that's something to be aware of because, let me change this microphone angle as well, I'm sorry if this is creating too much noise, um, because sometimes it's actually better not to break them. So looking at this, one of the thing, first things I would ask myself is, do I want to break these left hand chords or not? A and try them. So maybe a faster break. Maybe a wider break. where it's just two notes in the left hand. The fewer notes there are in a chord, the harder it is to get a nice break. Obviously, you can't break a single note, right? There's nothing to break it against. There's no contrast. Two, yeah, it often just doesn't sound very good. It sounds like you were trying to play them together sometimes and you missed, and 
it's not as clear that yes, we were trying to get this nice break. With three, you know, we can get a little break. It's more effective once we start to get four, or of course, both hands. You can get a really nice wide break if you want. Um, so I, with these three note, so certainly with the two note chords, it's really hard to do much of a break. With the three note chords, we can do a little bit of a break. Um, and it sounds, you know, it sounds. It sounds nice, it sounds harpy, uh, but my own personal preference is to don't break if I don't have to. And that, again, it, sometimes it gets overused, I think, and I'm cheating a little bit here because looking onto the first variation, we get these left hand chords are now broken apart into arpeggios. So we're going to hear that kind of sound underneath the tune right away in the first variation. So I think, again, and if I were to play this more, who knows what I would come up with, but for now, my preference would be to have those be flat. And Again, thinking about the quality of the chord, that you're trying to support the right hand. You don't want them to, you don't, we don't want an obvious downbeat. I mean, it could become quite martial. We could do it that way, but I don't want to do it that way. What I want instead is to have it, to, so I don't want those chords to jump out. I want them to just sort of provide that support that nice tone underneath what the right hand is doing. So thinking about that, think about what the left hand is doing. Now let's look at the right hand and try to figure out musically what you want to do. And, and as I said, like you could certainly play this as a To me, that isn't I, that could work, but I don't. I prefer something a little more uh, kind of um, sad, kind of sorrowful, and and um, a little more restrained. So uh, let's see, a couple, a couple things to talk about. One is that just kind of the shape. So that's kind of two phrases here. The, the, you know, these four bar sections are a phrase and we have to hear that as a phrase that it's not just a note and a note and a note and a note, another note. It's just like when I'm talking, I'm not saying a word and another word followed by another word. All these words, it is a word followed by a word followed by a word, but there's a meaning, there's an overall uh, uh, phrase we're getting from here to there, and, and there's a meaning contained within those words, same as there's a meaning contained within these notes, and that we have this long overall phrase so that when we start, we're kind of aware of where we're going. Again, so to shaping a little bit so you can have a little bit of a rise and fall in volume, um, listening to the spaces between the notes. To me, it, it, as we come down, there's maybe a little bit of uh, more intensity, and then that backs off a little bit as we finish off. So this. Again, not overdone, just a little bit. Paying attention to these smaller notes, making sure that F doesn't get lost. It's the note in the weak position. We don't want to hear it. We want to hear it. And so 
would just play around with it. And of course, you, you know, and the more I would play this, the more I would get a sense of exactly how I wanted to do that. And the other thing to think about then is, oh, we kind of repeat it. It repeats except just at the end we tail off, I mean, we go all the way down. And anytime you get a section where it repeats, th there's always the option of doing uh, a little bit of a echo effect the second time. So the first time is louder and the second time is softer. My own personal preference is to, to kind of not overdo that. I, I don't like a really obvious echo effect, um, but it is definitely something to think about and be aware of. And, and, and again, maybe a little subtle echo effect can be beautiful. And in this case, of course, we are changing a little bit towards the end, but just again, as you're playing that, thinking that, oh, we get, we hear this. And now we're going to start for all intents and purposes. It's going to sound like what we just played. So trying to make that stay interesting and stay a little bit different it doesn't have to be a much, but just uh, thinking about, well, now what can I do something a little bit differently here the second time? So I'm going to play it the first part and then the second part. if I was totally happy with that. I, I backed off a little bit, did a little bit of an echo effect there that second time. Uh, eh, I'm not totally convinced, but again, so that's the type of thing you do. You play through it, trying this, trying that, just trying to listen to yourself, your, your palate, right? Trying to build that palate and listen to your, your taste, what, what, whether, oh, I really like this, I'll try to do that again, or I'm not quite sure about that, I'll experiment some more. And then we, we get this next section, there and so I think I want to bring the volume up a little bit um, and then these these uh, eighth notes I don't want to I don't want them to be too obvious I don't want I, I don't want them to go by too fast you know I don't want to or, or not pay attention to that B in the weak position but I also don't want to emphasize them too much just becomes a little bit too obvious. So something, uh, let's get, let's get out of it. Maybe something like that. And again, not too obvious here, but also paying attention to them. ending of course there's a this type of ending you can always there's a tendency to perhaps want to do quite a bit of a retard there because it sounds fine right but this is just the first statement of the theme we got all these variations to get through and so if that were the, if, if this were the very end of the piece I think you could get away with doing a, a reasonable amount of uh, retard there. But in this case, I think you want, again, want to be quite subtle because we're going to go on. We, yes, we can, we can do a little bit of phrasing, a little bit of holding back to indicate that we finished this whole statement of the theme. But not much. Anyway, so that's something, you know, just this fairly simple thing, but thinking about musically what you want to do. And, and as I say, a lot of that, just think about that as you're playing through it and maybe play through it several times and just always trying different ways and just trying to trying to find that as it, oh, it just tastes so good, the, you know, trying to find that way that you really like it. And then we get on to the uh, next variation, or sorry, the first variation, the very first variation. And here, the left hand's just got these arpeggios underneath, and to me, that movement means we want to feel that movement throughout the variation that we have just a little bit more uh, forward feeling. theme applies. 
apply here just in terms not that you would necessarily do things musically the same way but just in terms of thinking about things and how you want to do you know we have this kind of repeated section and how you you know how you want how you want it to go so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk again about that but just think in the same way and then we get to the second variation and the left hand is playing the tune and here just uh, it's uh, it's probably worth practicing the left hand alone and it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to avoid buzzing on these big thick strings that there's all this vibration still going on so you may have to just finagle around a little bit and find the fingering that works best for you and to try to have this be as smooth and as melancholic and, and beautiful is the first two uh, statements and then again the right hand I wouldn't break it for sure because it's kind of hard to hear the left hand as it is or, or I mean there's a risk that it might get covered up and if you start going it just it just becomes a little bit hard to tell exactly what's going on and we lose the ability to try to play just this beautiful left hand line and the right hand is just just providing a little bit of support you know these little chime like sounds up above than we've done uh, on either of the previous ones uh, because now we're moving the next variation is a little bit uh, more notes stuff happening again like the first variation it's a little faster feeling and this one is very calm and peaceful this variation too with just this right hand stuff going on so I think it's nice to maybe just let that fade away a little bit a little bit of a more perhaps a little bit more of a retarded at the end and then we get into variation three so let's just uh, finish that off and, and actually you'll notice there I did more than I wanted to getting in there I went something like that maybe that was exaggerated but that those first you know those first two eighth notes we want them to be clear because if if, if it gets lost if, or if it's not clear what's happening then because this whole variation basically we have eighth note followed by eighth note followed by eighth note so we want to set that up right at the very start and hear that oh yeah these are just eighth notes just chugging along but musically we don't want to corny so so something yeah something like that where, where they are clear what's happening but not too much not 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 taking a bunch of extra time This one obviously this variation is trickier than the what we've played before um, uh, I'm using that particular fingering you might find something you, you might prefer to do um, I like just keeping all that stuff in the right hand and it does 
always seem to be marked that way. But um, uh, anyway, so that might, the, the variation might require a little bit more practice. But again, we have this string of eighth notes, so kind of thinking about the fact that we don't want it just, we don't want it to end up uh, not having any sort of sense of a phrase that, oh, it's just uh, oh, another note, another note, another note, that in fact, with this string of eighth notes, we can sort of draw this beautiful line of, of sound, you know, a little rise, a little fall, whatever feels appropriate, listening to the um, space between the notes and, and have fun with that phrase and, and thinking about the same things we've been thinking about for the whole piece, uh, the repeated or semi-repeated section and just how we want to treat that whole variation. And I think this variation wants to go a, a little bit faster, a little sense of, of yeah, now we, we're getting into the piece. We're going to have some fun here. Um, but I mean, it's still obviously still quite sad sounding. Um, so hopefully that's been, that's been interesting. And uh, I will definitely see you in two weeks time for the conclusion of this look at Ankh van Kampen's Variations on a Welsh Carol. Cheers. <laughs>